skew to the left or skew to the right, just like having a graph of how the business uh, is it increasing or decreasing. So how do we would graph their business? So we use the word wave in their uh, in the third way for their business. So we have their own or proper terminology about the word wave. And in the third I am from a 
mountain area. And then I went to Mango. And then as far as I knew, bucket would miss a tube where it is a can. And then my companion would say, hey Winter, a bucket of sun meat, please. So I would think that, oh, there is a one my she's only, uh, she's only ordered for himself because bucket would miss a can or a tube. So what what might be happen? What might what might happen? He's order he's ordering for himself. So it would be my I'm ordering for myself too. So I would say, hey waiter, a bucket of sun made too. So in a bucket today for our for the waiters, it would mean a container having a six set of what is that? You speak English, please. Yes, sir, sir. If I will order, if I will order, so... So it would be like, oh, I can go home. English for our purposes. The reason. English for the reason. A word or a term of, for example, spa. When you say spa, literally, you would um, understand it like a stain or a mark of a dirt. But for them, a spot is the sign or a good or a beautiful place for them. And then, for example, one of the directors or one of the of your manager said that please find a good spot for me. And then you don't go out, you are not in that field. You are just um English for academic purposes for a part of the those undergrad or undergraduates then you don't know that he is a Teresa a part of a Teresa or even the director you don't know that what um you don't know what field he or she is in so we he says that please find a spot for me what um, um, for if you are any literal thinking, you're just thinking it literal, literally, you just go out and find some words and give it to him. Hey sir, this is a spot. Hey sir, this is what are you looking for? But then, spot for the mood needs a sign. And for our way of thinking now, for our own comprehension now, we know what spot means. And we know what the third spot specifically the English for our purposes. As we all know, we know this word here for color, a paint, for a protection, but it is also means and aspect. So we know what are the terms for them, and we know what are the terms. For us, for us, uh, each one of us. Another is the efficient for uh, efficient English. When you say efficient English, it is in the airport. Like um, they have also their language for the terms for them, like air traffic controllers. There are those pilots. Then you would determine how long they are in, a, in the air, or you would determine how um, if there are also or there is also a plane, um, plane. Uh, uh, it will determine how long or how high we are in the air, and 
we want um, we have this great field communication for those also who are um, in another pilot in another play. So uh, we have their own language for the for the communication, and I don't know their terms or their specific language, but according to my research, we have um, to use radio communication for their. And also with the civil aviation, it was um, civil aviation. Um, you are not pilots. You are just in a way. I say avatar. Avatar. What comes up into your mind? What the movie? Avatar. What do you mean by avatar? Avatar in the term means it was um, a god in an animal body. But avatar would simply mean as a screen name or as an internet user. So we say, we say, I Such English, and by knowing the different context, it is 
asking us what specific terms or what specific field we are going or what specific field that we are having. Are you done completely? Okay. Now, just give us a very important abstract of your report in six sentences. When you talk of important part of the abstract, do not anymore look at the writings on the board. Just only share your insights into the ESP in different contexts in six sentences so that everybody can be remembered well as to the application of the ASP in different contexts. ESP from the word specific term will be considered as specific purposes. So purposes why we are learning English. The wants and the needs. Wants will be an academic purposes and the other the needs is the English for occupational purposes. Occupational purposes in different contexts, it is in us. If in um, what field we are going to, what specific language we are dealing with. You cannot use a, a specific words if you don't know what is the really meaning of that, the real meaning of that term. So a word is an ambiguity. There are many or a variety of meanings. The specific would mean that if you are in a field, you know what does that mean. And, and just like uh, ASP is consists of English for occupational and for academic process. If you are in the field, if you are um, professionals, you know what EOP means. And if you are in undergraduate, you belong to the EAP. Okay. You discussed a while ago and I noticed that you said macro skills, the last one is overviewing. It's not overviewing but viewing. Uh, viewing. The last uh, macro skill in language teaching or language communication is viewing. Viewing is the, the, the newest macro skill that we have, okay? So far for the EAP, English for Academic Purposes, you have a lot, uh, a lot of words as the keywords for your discussion, especially the grammar. And in fact, you only partly discussed the function of grammar because you said that grammar is what? You have that, it's about the set of rules, but grammar actually is about the body of rules governing the use of language. And I want you to cite an example of grammar in English in learning English for specific purpose. What is the application of grammar in ESP as far as the different contexts are concerned? Because you say that we have the different nomenclatures and one nomenclature is using the EAP and the other one is EOP. Under the EAP, we have the study skills. The study skills, of course, are composed of the different skills. And one example of the skill is the macro skill. So we have the five macro skills of language communication. That is part also of the EAP for studying English in academic purposes. My question is, in grammar, what is the connection of the grammar in ESP, the application of grammar in ESP? How do you know that every word in the sentence is, of course, is partly connected with grammar as to the function of every word in the sentence? For that event, for example, just like um, what happened earlier, the host of the event said, um, "Our school are invited." We say school, just is 
school, not schools. Can you say schools? So there must be a set of grammar to be used, to be applied. Subject verb agreement, right? English for specific purposes as to learning English language. And when we talk of the language, we have also to follow the body of rules governing the use of that particular language. And that is the subject verb agreement. If the subject is singular, of course the verb must be singular. If the subject is a proper noun, so of course it is understood that it, it, is, it must be followed by a verb that either the verb is 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 or was or any singular verb or there is a verb that ends in s which is also in the present tense which is considered singular also but my question is what you said a while ago has also a connection of the subject verb agreement so it should not be you you, you won't say that it should be r because the subject is singular because school is singular so why not say r it is not correct if you say r so it should be s because that is the rule to be followed in subject verb agreement now in esp likewise in esp we have the grammar now why is it that we have to set the grammar as part of learning english language as the spe special purpose of knowing that there must be a grammar to determine that what we are talking what we are writing should be in accordance with the body of rules as far as the language is concerned grammar is part or a b consists also of grammar because a b is for academic purposes it could be open in a secondary level it could be um, also for us the tertiary a b would mean academic we say academic it is also learning english and because learning consists of variety or it is a broad um, grammar is also a part of learning English because as we all know the proper incorrect construction of the grammar would distract what are the what is the sentence really um, going to imply so what this the sentence means grammar can distract improper um, improper construction of grammar can distract what is the part of a sentence Okay, that is correct. So there's no problem anymore with EAP. Now for EOP, you have discussed everything, uh, different types of the English for occup occupational purposes, right? So I also noticed that you gave only one example per, per occupational purpose for the English. And well, I also, I, I feel happy still you can deliver and give example. Now, my question is, if we do apply the ESP in different contexts, using the two, the two, for example, the EAP and the EOP, can we also combine the two in connection with learning foreign language? Of course, sir. Um, we can use AAP and EOP at the same time. Because you cannot go or you cannot go to occupational purposes if you don't know of the academic purposes, of course. Because as, as what I have said, academic purposes is open from. Um, so in other words, it is prerequisite. Yes, sir. You cannot uh, learn the other special purposes for for the language English unless you undergo first with academic purposes for that language, English. Yes, because according to Stephens uh, 1988, um, English for uh, ESP is also open for the secondary level. Although it is for an advanced or intermediate, intermediate people or for those professionals, but um, he said that it is also open for the secondary. And it is really true because since we are, uh, we were in high school, we are learning the AEP. Okay, very good. Now, I would like to ask more about the EAP because you are now a future teacher because your course is BS Ed or BE Ed? BS Ed High School. Now, so it is a must for everyone to learn 
the EAP because it is also prerequisite before you learn other occupational purposes for the English language. And I would like to remind you also that with regard to special purposes, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that we only focus on English. We have also to learn other languages aside from English. It happens that our subject is focusing only English and we have to use the language English with the other functions with regard to the special purposes of the English language. How do we deal with the English language in learning other academic courses because it is very important as future teachers like us, right? If you don't have any savvy or knowledge about the the word that has a connection with the with law, then it's not good for you as a teacher that even your students are very good at the word and then you as a teacher doesn't have the know-how or even knowledge of that particular word. So that is why it is a must for you to learn also the other words in law, in computer, because that is part also of teaching. Although you are not in line with computer, but at least you have the ASP in computer learning, in computer vocabularies, right? So vocabularies in different courses like law, like computer, like, let's say, military, uh, medical professional, tourism, tourism, what else? Uh, business so all of the words are very important for us and we have to memorize if you if you can memorize all the words to add on your learning especially the vocabularies if you don't have the stack knowledge about that particular let's say word related to any 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 occupational English purposes for different academic purposes or academic courses. Of course, that it is not good for you that other students are very bright, are intelligent than you as to the stack vocabularies of different fields or courses. I think it is a must for us that each of us must learn at least 100 words per course. If you do memorize 100 words, of course you are now the best teacher in that institution. We do not know that you are also the best teacher in other learning institutions, but I know that you can feel that you have the edge over the other teachers as to vocabularies because you have the stack knowledge of the different vocabularies because you memorized all of them so i encourage you all to memorize if you can memorize at least 100 words per course when you talk about the course the field in medicine there are words there in medicine that you have to memorize more than 1000 i think uh, almost a billion words in medicine but if you do have the stock knowledge, at least 100 words in medicine, I think it is a great advantage for you that you, at least you have 100 words, at least huh? 100 words per medical profession. If not, uh, it's not good. You are not a good teacher if you cannot even memorize the words. Do you understand what I mean? So that is why I encourage you all in ASP this course that you have to memorize and I salute also the the student the reporter that she discussed also well maybe not in expansion of the ASP in different contexts but at least you delivered well how to be able to understand the EAP and what is the application for the EAP to our study in education and what is the application of the EOP for our study in education at least we have the idea now on how to apply the EAP and the EOP okay questions from the other students before we dismiss the class I don't need to ask more questions from me because 
I understand that the reporter also knew some other aspects of the ESP in different contexts, especially the different uh, vocabularies as far as occupational purposes for English language are concerned. And she wrote all of them there on the board. But there are other also examples of occupational purposes. At least you wrote some of them on the board. Now, I would like to ask from the other students if you have any idea or any question in addition to the discussion of the reporter. Yes, from the other side. Yes, the, the student who is late, uh, who is very late coming in, will you please... Dean uh, Ah, you are now in the Dean's list. I would like you to ask question about how to cope with ASP in different contexts and she discussed also the EAP for academic purposes and EOP for occupational purposes. Are there questions that you would like to to add on to enhance our also our knowledge about English for special purposes with regard to academic and occupational purposes? For example, if you want to become a journalist, there is also a specific purpose. Campus journalism. Campus journalism. There, is a, um, there are a lot of words there related to campus journalism about being a journalist. Yes, sir. Um, the teacher would not focus only for those teachers. For example, um, variety of students. Of course, the, uh, the teacher would not focus only for the education students. Would not focus only for the civil engineering but also focuses the, uh, the purposes of the students, why we are in your classroom. What are the terms or what are the learnings that we will learn from you? Okay, are, are, there, are you satisfied with your question? Okay, do you have another follow-up question? None. Now may I ask the other students here, to, here in this class to ask questions? Before I dismiss the class, one more question from this side. Go. Somebody who could, who could uh, say, who could say by asking question from this side. Aria, please. We cannot move on. We cannot dismiss the class unless somebody will volunteer to ask questions from this side. Anyone? Aside from the one who asked question on the dean's list. What about the other students? Yes, you there, Hintika. Go. Now, she wrote coping with ESP in different contexts. She wrote also English language teaching and she wrote also the wide scope and it superimposes other nomenclatures such as EAP and EOP. Now, based on the writings on the board of the English for academic purposes and English for occupational purposes, I want you to ask questions that are related to 
any of the purposes that the reporter wrote on the board, the EAP and the EOP, so that all of us will be will be enlightened as to the knowledge of the ESP. By the end of the semester, we can have also the survey on how to apply words in different fields, aside from being an education student, one by one here in this class. In Tika, please, Robert. What is now your question? I will change this to, what are now your questions? Oh, more than one question. Go. You, get, you raise questions at least two. Number one. Hurry up, please. Don't tell me that you cannot frame, you cannot even frame a question based on the given examples on the board. Now, prepare any of the representatives here on this side, at least two. Two students from this side. Do not wait for me to choose who among you here in this side, but I want you to volunteer from this side to ask questions. Do not let me choose you. You have to volunteer. Robert, go. Start now. Aviation? English, okay. Can you give me or can you cite or can you give me a, a specific example or example? Another example for aviation English. You have air traffic and civil aviation. So aside from the two the two phrases, just give me give us another word aviation. related to aviation English. Aviation English focuses for those pilots. For those who are in charge of airplanes. For example, with air traffic controllers, you are what we call pilots. A girl who serves you for the snacks, for the for the meals. The, 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 this women. Who do you who do you call? Uh, for flight attendant or stewardess, yes. Also in innovation industry. Okay. Um about the civil aviation, we are those who are in charge. Airport. For example, who are these people? Can you cite even one? Those um, chief, like um, those engineers. So the same. So engineer is also applicable to our education in, in academic purpose. In education also, we can say engineer, field engineer. We, we can do that. There are those aircraft um, engineers. Ah, so aircraft engineer. So it is specific that it is an aircraft engineer. So that is part of aviation English. Okay. Yes, what about you? You are also very late coming in the class, but I want you to, to ask questions. Any question that is related to ASP. ASP, coping with ASP in different contexts. Yes, start. Hurry up. No, no, no. One question. Just this is on the spot question. You can ask. You can even frame uh, one question right away about English for academic purposes and English for occupational purposes. You can even ask uh, which one is is easier for us to learn. Is it EAP and EOP? Uh, something like that. You can even frame a question like that if you think that it is hard go start occupational purposes about the profession that we are um, wishing 
Are you satisfied with the answer of the reporter? Satisfied, yes or no? Yes, okay. What about from this side? Any representative or any student from this side? Father. <laughs> Father? Your... No questions from this side? Yes, you. Hurry up, please. Even one question, you cannot even frame a single question for to the reporter. Hurry up. None? So you everything here is well discussed and it is well understood by everybody here. Huh? If you have no questions? None. Okay. Okay, the on the dance list, please uh, critique. You critique now. You're the late student, but you can still critique her. Then another on the dance list. Uh, can you cite another? Okay, you. You critique. Oh. You're, you're next. You're the first one. And then the, she's next. Okay, you critique the reporter. Everything about her report, about the content of her report, about the questions given by her classmates to her, everything, including me. Go. So, um, Jeremy Santarita did her report very well. Um, she never failed to expand every terms in on the board. <laughs> so that's where I think, sir. Even though that you are very late yes, coming inside, but you can still give your own conclusion to the reporter. Yes, your own assessment of a report. Yes, why, why? Because based on the questions, sir, I think she answered it very well. Okay, based on the questions. Okay, next. Okay. Thank you for your feedback. Next, on the dance list, yes. What critique? Critique now, the reporter. But you have to critique. Critique is on the negative side. So, that's also it's not so you mean that it's not good it's not proper it's not on the right the right position okay now what about you Santarita you have 20 to 30 minutes to say something okay you can defend everything you defend yourselves everybody Defend yourself and an anybody here. Oh, you, you cannot even defend, but give me the final say. Everything, final words. Before we dismiss the class. Final words, but final question. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you mean that you will, you will, you will, uh, what? You will have your own question to your classmates? Um, I would just like to ask if you really understand my report. Okay. Oh, please. Yes. Defend yourself or yourself a uh, way of discussing everything what she also yes, they say commented on you. Everything. What what, what is now your assessment to that? Well of course personally I am a big woman. So I cannot afford to sit down and try to know her goodness. So you mean that you have confidence in yourself, in you that what you have discussed to us is perfect. <laughs> what? Just yes or no? D d defend it. So you mean that what you have discussed is it enough for us that we learn the ASP in different contexts using the EAP and the EOP? Is it enough for us? So you mean that you delivered well and it is perfect? Uh, so there is another another basis for so you. Maybe, sir. Um, I think a girl who grow up with a girl being in George would not like. Uh, that's it. Okay, a big hand to the reporter. Yeah.